This segment is brought to you by Jigmaster Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com and use promo code PNF20 and save 20% off your next jig order today. You're listening to The Real Down, sponsored by Catch Photo Release Tournaments. This is your premier tournament source. Here are your hosts, Sam Jones and Dan Perry. All right, everybody, welcome back to The Real Down. Tonight, as a co-host, I've got the OG, Brian Schiller, with me. What up? What up, what up? Well, tonight we're going to get right to it, and uh, hopefully everybody out there is doing safe and, uh, you know, being safe, healthy, all that good stuff, and uh, doing whatever you think is right to protect yourself, and, you know, hopefully this ends pretty soon. But tonight we're talking about the Kayak Back, Kayak, it's Tongue Twister, Kayak (laughs) Bass bracket tour i'm from the south man don't (laughs) put a lot of words together is tough for me so uh so we got a round table we've got like a whole loop because i'm fishing that too so i'm from alabama we've got we'll start over with uh mark coates and uh he is in arkadelphia arkansas welcome to the show sir appreciate it happy to be here yeah man and then we've got jonathan pippen up in uh Pepin, oh Lord, I did it! I screwed it up right from the start. <laughs> <laughs> you said you said don't say Pippin, then I say Pippin. That's that's how it works. Okay. Jonathan Pepin from a uh, S- uh, right outside Escanaba, Michigan, which is in the UP, and I want to find out all about that because that's like some mythical land I'd like to know more about and visit oh, one. Oh yeah, like, man! Bucket list type stuff. Uh, <laughs> thanks for thanks for being on the show, sir. I appreciate you having me on. I'm excited. And then we've got a two-time loser, second time on a show, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Mark Edwards. I met Shots that. fired, bro. I mean, that he's been on the show twice. I like Mark. He knows that. Uh, Mark Edwards, and he's from a uh, coal country up there in Pipe Stem. That's a fun name, Pipe Stem, not Pipe Stream, Pipe Stem, <laughs> West Virginia. So thanks for being on the show again, Mark. My pleasure. You yeah, know what's man. gonna happen now, right, Dan? Like what? you you two are gonna be in the final matchup of this bracket and he's just gonna stomp you, dude. Hey, we're <laughs> in the same region. So it, <laughs> it's possible. We're in the west, I guess. So uh yep, thanks guys for being on the show and uh yeah, hopefully everybody's doing good and, and thanks for being here. So we'll get right into it. Uh, uh and we'll start with you, Mark, since you're We'll do the loop. If you're looking, watching us on YouTube, we'll go around the, the bend. Uh, Mark, tell everybody about yourself, besides being having a one-horned goat. Um, I like to kayak fish. I try to fish every weekend, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Right. I just yeah, like to fish. And, I, and this bracket tournament is totally different, and it's pretty pretty – uh, I'm not a fan of the online stuff, but the way this coronavirus is going and stuff, you know, so I jumped on it. And um, if the weather turns out, I can really, really do well if the weather would change for me. But I it's tough. You. Well, he's being bashful, but uh, hey, he's a hammer. He got second at the Logan Martin event and the Bassmaster, the first man ever came down here in Alabama and whooped me. So uh, congratulations to him again. And then next we have Mark. Coates, tell us about yourself, sir, if, if uh, people don't already know. <laughs> uh, well, um, I was, uh, I've was i lived in Arkansas just about my whole life. Um, I've been kayaking for off and on, I think, about 12 years total, maybe a little bit more, uh, competing in tournaments off and on for about eight years now. Um, man, I just got to say, going into this, uh, into the KBB tank, uh, thing I, I'm sure I was like a lot of other people I didn't really know what to expect at first it was different but I like different I said you know what if it's yeah. different I'm gonna give it a shot because you never know what it's gonna be like and man I've got to say I think this is turning into the hottest thing in kayak fishing right now <laughs> yeah and and we'll talk about it later there's a, another bracket that came out and it's filled up and it looks like you know there's a lot I mean this bracket luckily there's a lot of people who were you know like me just signed up but I think it kind of got a little bit some notoriety going and some bigger names signed up. Not not that they're better fishermen, just people that are common names in the kayak industry. So, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But I, we want to know about y'all. 
So next we got Jonathan Pepin from the UP. Tell us about yourself, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I live in Barker River, Michigan. I'm just south of Escanaba. Most people would, you know, understand Escanaba as being, we're probably the second largest uh, city in the Upper Peninsula, which uh, is very big uh, compared to everything downstate and whatnot. But uh, I've been doing the kayak bass fishing tournaments for, this will be my fourth year. Um, I've been involved in all kinds of like stock car racing and motocross and things like in years prior. And I, uh, I got injured and got back into a stock car after racing motocross. And then I, uh, it was just expensive and I hated to do the every weekend thing. And I just, uh, I got into the kayak fishing thing and it, it was, it's my competition. I got to have competition, you know, that's what that's right. kind of drives me, you know? So this has been really, it's a great experience for me. I have a lot of fun and especially up in the upper peninsula, People don't realize, like, we got some really good fishing up here. And I've never been a real big bass guy, but, but once I kind of got into the swing of things, and I, I really like it. And, and uh, you know, I, I started from the bottom, and just last year I just got into my first pedal kayak. So it's, uh, I don't know, it's looking up for me right now, and I'm really enjoying it. So I'm glad to be here. Cool. And all four of us, we made it past the first round from the round of 64 to the round of 32. Congratulations to everybody that made it. And uh, so everybody in the 32 is fishing this weekend, half on Saturday and half on Sunday. So since we're still with you, Jonathan, how did you do last weekend? Tell us about your day and how that went and the numbers you put up. Well, um, starting out in the morning, I uh, didn't have very big uh, – thoughts of anything happening i just the water was super cold it was snowing in the morning <clears throat> the wind was down so i thought maybe i'd try offshore because i'm basically i'm fishing with river malts and stuff right now everything up in the up is about a month behind down state wisconsin so water temperatures are just starting to get wow. up there and uh i got out maybe a half mile off the shore and the wind kicked up and i just I didn't want to mess with it, so I went in short. Back up into the river, and uh, it was just a struggle, man. I could not get a bite for, like, the first few hours. <clears throat> and uh, I finally just looked in my box and just, like, I, I had talked to Mark uh, last weekend, and I said, I, I thought to myself, if I was sitting on a bank, and an old guy looked at me with all my gear and said, why are you throwing all that stuff, you know? Throw the, throw the things that work, the old school things, you know? And I seen a Mr. Twister sitting in my tackle box, and I grabbed it, threw it on. I caught my first fish, and uh, so just yeah, that right there in itself, you know, I got I got the skunk out of the way because I was just like, I can't get into something like this and not catch a fish. So uh, it, it was a little while after that before I started getting into anything else, but it was the biggest thing that was difficult for me was with the water temperatures being so slow. I'm not, I'm not the greatest fisherman at, at slow, methodical fishing, but that's what I had to do, man, and I just... I had to be super slow, dragging tubes on the bottom like it was just a, you know, simple piece of bait for them to pick up. And it, it literally, it wasn't until later on the afternoon where I probably got my first two fish. But uh, the afternoon, the sun came out, it got, got nice, and I started, you know, getting on more fish, getting on size. I finally put up a 20-inch fish, and I was able to start calling fish, and it was just the afternoon, it was just on fire. I just, I bet you, I, I want to say I called probably four or five fish. I still couldn't get over that. I think my small fish was 16 and three quarters, which I was really pulling for. But uh, I ended up fourth at the end of the day on Sunday, which uh, which I was pretty darn happy about fishing up in the UP and stuff. And I'm just, uh, as of right now, I'm just really hoping this weather changes because we had snow again today. It was like 34 degrees. And I just need that water to get warmer so I can just expand my uh, – <laughs> you know, fishing places to right now, it's, it's pretty minimal, but either way, I, uh, I've got to go up against Eric Siddiqui this weekend, which is one of the top kayak pros out there. And, uh, sounds like he's going to be coming up towards Michigan. And he, I, if I remember right, he said his goal was to get a hundred inches of small mall. So that's what I got up here at small mall. And, uh, I'm going to give him everything I got and hopefully I can, uh, if I can't beat him, I'm going to do everything I can to just, put on a good show and show people from around the United States that the Upper Peninsula has got some great bass fishing too, man. What, what did you have last weekend? Uh, as far as inches? Yeah. Uh, let me check, check really quick. I was just looking at this. Because <laughs> I mean, that, I, I know the top, the top three on Sunday, they had over a hundred. So, and Siddiqui was one. Right. Of them, but it, 
If you got fourth, yeah. then you were right there. Well, first place was 103, and then Siddiqui yeah. was 103 quarters. Um, I was in fourth with 93 inches, and I was only three quarters of an inch out of third. Fifth place yeah. had 90 and a quarter. So, and and at that point, I think bringing that at over to Saturday too, I tied for the sixth biggest bag between both days, which you know up here in the UP, I thought was just awesome. Oh and, yeah, killer. Um, last year, I I actually I qualified for the national championship for the KBF down in Guntersville this year, fishing solely Upper Michigan waters. I think we had I I ended up qualifying through the uh, monthly tournament, and I believe I took sixth out of like it was like almost seventy anglers. So and in doing that, it's just I don't know, it's just cool, man, to be able to to fish up here and. I'm just trying, I'm trying to grow this up here too, because lots of, lots of guys up here are just, they're bass boat fishermen or they're walleye fishing. And the whole kayak gig just, uh, not really, hasn't really done much up here, but it's starting to catch on. And, and I got a group going up here, the Upper Peninsula Kayak Anglers, and we're starting to get some live tournaments and monthly going. And, and, uh, I think, uh, after this year, things are de- definitely going to be picking up and people are going to realize more what the Upper Peninsula has got to, you know, in hand as far as, uh, smallmouth bass fishing, you know. And if you do come down, I mean, there are smallmouth on Gunnersville. I mean, you can come down here and, you know, back them too. So, but I mean, dude, 93 inches, it, that, that could be, that could go 100 inches a, any day. So, I mean, I, I know Siddiqui is a big name and all that, but you're right there. And, you know, you have, I, I wouldn't be worried about the name because you can put them up just like he can, I'm sure, being up there. And that, I mean, that's like the great part of being in a place that, kind of maybe bass fishing isn't as big because maybe the that less pressure makes the fishing better you know around here every every a-hole's got a you know a bass rod and he's out there trying to catch them here in alabama at least up there in the up you know you got a lot of it to yourself that's awesome right and there's still so many waters that there's great fishing bass fishing and i've never even been there yet and it's like, so my goal is, I got some bays, you know, across Lake Michigan. You know, I'm fishing waters of Lake Michigan. You know, I'm not like, I'm not on inland lakes right now. You know, I'm getting fish that are coming in off the big lakes. And I got some waters that I'm going to try out more this year. And if I can hit on some things, it's definitely going to kick things up for me. Very Heck cool. Yeah. Mr. Coates, how was your day? Man, uh... I told my dad at a 6.55 to pay attention to the live feed because I was about to put on a clinic. Oh, Lord. Uh, I drove, uh, I, I drove uh, an hour and a half south from my house and uh, got to a little lake called White Oak. Well, it's, I knew it had Florida strain in it, but I didn't have a whole lot of experience on the lake. But uh, I said, you know what? I know there's big bass in here. A couple of weeks before, I caught 23 and a quarter, 18 and three quarters, and left. and said, you know what? We're going to go give it a shot on week one. So I get down there, and I said, as long as there's not a north wind, I am going to be perfectly fine. I get to the ramp. I get to the water. I, I get out past the main channel, and as soon as I hit that main channel, I realize it's about a 10-mile-per-hour north wind. I said, okay. Oh, so I'm going to go to a completely si- different side of the lake that I didn't pre-fish. I get over there, and it's nothing but shallow hydrilla grass flats. So we can work with this. Uh, I'm sitting there at like right at the edge, uh, uh, about to be first cast. I'm just watching Bass Bulldog Shad. Awesome. Seven o'clock hits. I sling over there. As soon as my, as soon as my fluke hits the water, it's engulfed by a 20-plus inch. And... Uh, I guess on the ride down there, my drag was loose, loosened, and I never checked it. So as soon as I set the hook, all you hear is <laughs> and jumped one time, and, and that one was gone. And I probably missed three others before I finally caught my first one. But man, after that, that first one, it was just one after another, all the way till about two o'clock. Uh, I was leading for a while, and then you threw yours up and hit 93. And I told everybody, I said, "Don't worry, I'm going to pass this guy. I'm going to pass Perry." Um, <laughs> And right at two ten, and what? I got a what? What happened? <laughs> oh, it didn't happen. But <laughs> I, I got a nineteen and three quarters at two ten. That put me a quarter inch behind you, and I could not get that last inch out of that fish. And uh, man, after that, I went the rest of the day without a bite. But you know, it was it was a grind and heavy winds. Uh, 
it was just one of those things i was having to work shad spawns in different areas i was fishing post spawn fish and but I, I had to get in thick for some of them things that 20 inch i did post it was so <laughs> dug up in the grass i had to go elbow deep just to pull it out so i mean I, them, oh go ahead oh no you go go ahead well what, what i was going to say is that you know so we've heard you know i had a good day uh jonathan had a good day mr coates i'm saying mr coates because we have two marks and uh but the man who's probably the most known out of all of us mr edwards you didn't have a great day but that's why i wanted to have you on too because that's how the cast back bass bracket works it's not a month-long deal it's a single day and you're only competing against one other person you had you didn't have a great day and you still won and sometimes that you know that's the the beauty of the way this bracket works so tell us i, I know it wasn't great and i don't want you know i'm not going to dog you out and put you down because you didn't have a great day but you caught like a pb fish right yeah i caught two muskies that i caught two muskies that was personal best they they both were 37 inches probably close to 20 pounds um but see i work five days a week and i ain't taking no vacation that's so, right. I, and I'm actually in another tournament at the same time. So this ain't the lake I would have actually picked. You know, I'm actually going to the lake that I want to fish this week. Um, so anyhow, I went to uh, uh, Stonewall Jackson Lake, which is one of our probably our most popular lake. Cause, uh, and it's one of our largest lakes, which is only 2000 acres. But with this coronavirus going on and nobody's working in the state of west virginia everybody's fishing oh dude everybody that's crazy down here getting over the normal so no practice or nothing and the weather's supposed to rain all day so after work friday i drive three hours after work sleep in my truck you know it's gonna rain all night and then it's supposed to clear up during the tournament saturday and then it was, i think it was supposed to be high 54 so you know and I had a little intel that the water temps like three weeks ago was like in the 60s, low 60s. So that's, you know, spawn range. So, you know. Yeah. Getting close. But but the fish had, uh, the weather for three weeks has been in the 50 cents. Everything's been cool. So I knew it was going to be a struggle to find out what stage they were in. So I had like two jerk baits tied on, three cranks. I'm thinking they're going to kind of be pre-spawn still staging you know what i'm saying yeah and uh so i started out with that jerk bait in the first hour in an alabama rig i threw an alabama rig for a while and uh anyway i got a musky and i was like well you know an hour of that no bites you know bass so i said here's a mega bass jerk bait you don't want to lose it and that place is full of muskies huh. so i said okay, let's go to one of these pockets and and fish shallow and see if these things are you know I was fishing the main lake because the guy I was fishing against, I talked to him and he said, if you get a limit, you'll beat me. He was actually fishing the chick, which is oh, way right. than I was on, but they were in flood stages. So, you know, the weather was bad. I think I went across the country for, for everybody, but I went up in there and I caught my first large mouth. It was like 12 and a half inches, you know, it was a keeper. So I thought, okay, these fish are shallow, even though the water temp was only 50 degrees. And the main lake was still like 54, 55. And there's spotted bass in that lake. So I was thinking I could maybe get a limit of spots, you know, just a 12-inch dink limit, yeah, you know. Fell out limit. Yeah, because it was a struggle. And in, in the West Virginia tournament I was involved, um, they only had to be eight inches. That's all they had to be. And the boy I fished against there was a bracket tournament too. Oh, okay. Um, it was a struggle, man. I mean, like, he never caught a fish. So you won that one too. I won that one too. Yeah. <laughs> That's like the best worst day ever. <laughs> well, I, I, their tournament ended at three. So I turned in all my fish there. And then uh, I only had the one fish for our tournament, you know, the national tournament. So I went above the marina where I put in. And I know where some laydowns was because I was catching fish in laydowns. They were like, I don't know if these fish were actually spawning. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if they got so far into the spawn that they just didn't, that maybe they were still spawning, even though the water temps say not, you know? Yeah. I don't 
because they were they were fairly shallow in trees, you know, in brush. So I knew where some more laydowns was, and I'm heading up through there, and there was a rock slide, big old rock slide. So I threw my shaky head over next to a rock slide. Okay, the, it starts swimming out. I set the hook, and I thought it was a big large mouth or something, man. I, I thought, here's a big one. Yeah, it was another musky. And this is like 4 o'clock. And um, I don't have a above the marina. So, um, anyhow, uh, I, I mean, I had to redo my tackle, man. I had to retie my, my pole after I got rid of that musky and all that and retie another shaky head because it destroyed it. Put it on, went down there to them two trees I wanted to fish and caught a 12 incher, like a four or something. And, you know, I had no clue that was going to get me by. I really didn't, but it, it got me by. And then if the weather, the weather ain't looking good for me this weekend either, but we do have two fisheries that that I can compete with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but I mean, I still, up, you, I mean, you, you, you worked hard, you struggled, but you fished till the end of the day. I mean, I, that shows determination and you caught that second fish at the end of the day and that was enough to win. And that's, that's the, the beauty of a bracket style tournament. Yeah. And the guy that I got this week, um, he fishes a uh, fails mirror or I think yeah. that's how you say it, down in Florida. Oh Lord. Yeah. yeah. Like, what they, it's like called field 13 like some alien stuff you know like some like i i want to fish there so bad we had a kayak anglers of florida on not too long ago and you know everybody's seen hoover and all them out fellas man dude i want to go there so bad yeah but i mean he only put up 81 inches was well, that's pretty good but that's not good for there you know so yeah. i i put up over 90 inches on this place i'm going three times so i mean for west virginia that's damn good you know what i'm saying yeah yeah so i i i guess that's the question because of a bracket style tournament what what do y'all going into this week maybe uh uh jonathan maybe it's a little bit different for you (laughs) because you're going against Siddiqui. but the uh like what what what's your mind frame like what numbers do you are you going for and what like what do you think you need to have to just get in to be competitive and then what do you what's your goal weight just go around the horn here i i mean i guess if you want to start with me my goal going into any tournament is to catch five fish minimum yeah just get a bag and start from there like i literally i start every day before i go down the water and it's like i just gotta catch five fish because that's you know it's it's hard sometimes, obviously, you know, like he was just talking, only catch it two in one day. But uh, as far as going against Eric, um, I mean, inch-wise, my goal, i got to catch at least 90 inches. I mean, fishing against a guy like that who knows water so much better than, than, than I do. You know, like I said, I, where I fish is very limited. I, I travel downstate and Wisconsin. And, and other than that, I've never done much bass fishing besides that. So he's been to numerous lakes, big lakes, and he wants to put up 100 inches of smallmouth. And that's doable up here. I've put up over 100 inches of smallmouth up here, so I know it's possible. But wow. my biggest thing is, gonna be is what, what can the weather do? Um, it's just if we were supposed to be in the 50s on Sunday, which uh, would be awesome because I was closing in when I, when I left the water on Sunday – I had a high of 46 is water temperature and that was, you know, catching, I think I ended up catching like nine fish. So if we can get warmer temps there and then the fish start moving for me, I can travel within 20 miles and I can be at three different, basically, you know, river mouths, access points to Lake Michigan that I know that there's big fish, but are they there yet? I don't know. You know, I'm, you know, I'm going to be doing some recon here later on in the week, and uh, I don't know, mainly just going to be checking water temps and, and, and checking which way the wind is blowing and what's going to work out best for me. But if, if I got to stick to the waters I was fishing this past week, and so be it. And, uh, you know, knock on wood, hopefully if I have to head out offshore and try to find some big rock piles and find some big bass, hopefully I can do it. But uh, I mean, <clears throat> it took me all last year to catch a fish over 20 inches. And the first fish I caught this year, was 20 and a quarter inches so it's like i know they're there i just yes. gotta get on them but but yeah that's that's kind of where i'm headed right now man that's my goal is just 
catch five fish. I love to get over 90 inches in one day. That'd be huge. But uh, it's just we'll see where the cards fall. And uh, I'm just I'm just excited to fish. Like literally, just to know that I'm fishing head to head against this guy. You yeah. know, fish against a seasoned veteran. And uh, I, it's just cool. And that's what I like about this bracket thing. And I got in here late. I didn't even know about it until like maybe a week before it started. And uh, one of the guys that's new to our club up here, Matt Linsman, had contacted me and said, hey, they got an open spot. Why don't you hop in, you know? And then I got in and it's like I started looking at the bracket. I'm like, oh, man. I'm like, well, I only got to worry about this week. But if I do good this week, I, I got a good chance I could go against Eric Sadiki. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's what happened. And that's what what's uh, at stake this weekend and I'm just I'm gonna give her everything I have and uh and, and try to put this place right here on the map a little bit more because you know I, I love living up here I'm born and raised up in UP and uh you know it's like a lot of us like to call it it's, it's God's country and everything north of the bridge is called heaven <laughs> very cool Heck yeah Ma- Mr. Coates what what's your uh what, what's your strategy here uh, well knowing that I'm going up against Hayden Crossno um there's not a whole lot I can find out on him, but the people that do know him say he is a stick. From what I understand, he lives over in West Texas. When I think of West Texas, I think O.H. Ivy. I suck at Ivy, but I know the monsters that are in Ivy. So I'm thinking I've got to have 93 to be competitive, 98 to squeak out a win on him. Wow. Okay. And well, I think if I... Go, Go ahead. ahead. I think if I get 98, um, Jeff Isham, I'm coming for you, buddy. <laughs> I mean, I say, you, you know, I mean, anything 93. To me, it's you know, yeah. I'll I'll go before Mr. Edwards here, but I I think it's like 880. You need to just be in the game to even be competitive, and then 90 to, you know, that like 90, you, you know. Do we all want to catch 100? Of course we do. But, I mean, you put yourself in a good situation. Put yourself around big fish. If you can come up with 90, you know, who knows if, if you're going to be able to make go from 90 to 100. That's more on the fish, I think, than what it is the angler but because you're in the right area. Do a couple of those bigger bites show up? Do you get one of those, you know, megas that actually really up your, your numbers, you know? So... That's my, like, 80 is just to get in it, and the 90-plus is is what I'm hoping for. But even on Gunnersville, I mean, I'm driving two hours and then getting there early and pedaling an hour just to get to my spot. But, uh, you know, I, you, you want to catch all you can, but I, I think 90-plus is, is what we're all thinking. How about you, Mr. Edwards? Yeah, 90 is the goal. And yeah. then if you get beat at 90 inches, I mean, if you put up 90 or 91 inches and get beat, you don't feel as bad. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're having 90 plus, you're having a, you know, an you excellent a, day. So you got beat is what happened. That guy just straight out beat you. Um, but yeah, my goal is 90 inches. I mean, now this week was totally different. This past week, I was on the limit. <laughs> this is yeah. what the, the, cause it, the one week I said, it was 49 degrees. And my buddy was in there three weeks ago and it was 63. So that temperature dropped. 14 degrees in three weeks i i don't know i mean that's just rough on the fish you know what i'm saying it's horrible um but this week i mean I'm, I'm going for 90 and i hope he has a bad week again i mean that's all i can do and if i put up 100 then <laughs> that'd be awesome but yeah yeah and we know because I mean, I'm, I'm fishing a mud hole and like it's still going to be i think it's going to be 67 here saturday and that's going to be really the warmest day that we've had in probably two weeks. So yeah, that should be good, then. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and and you're going against Jake uh, Suvac, yeah, an, another Florida guy. So yeah, it's a uh, two Florida guys. It's a uh, it's tough, you know. The the guy I'm fishing against, uh, Tony Bryant, who's a Will D team guy, and he lives in Virginia, and Virginia yeah. isn't. You know, it's not Texas or Florida, but I know they, you know, some there's some big ones in Virginia too. So, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I didn't know you was up against Tony. Yeah, but me and Tony's been talking. Oh yeah. What? <laughs> so g- give me a little intel here. What's going on? Well, he he only fished three hours the other day on New River. He killed a. He either caught in a turkey or killed a turkey Saturday too. 
that he was fishing. And he won. So that, that's who I'm going against. The guy that only had to fish three hours to win. Great. That, 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 that sounds awesome. You, you, know what's, you know what's funny about that? I was talking to Hayden Crosno. He also said he only fished for three hours because he went turkey hunting as well. And he advanced. Well, I'm I'm gonna eat a turkey sandwich and fish all day. <laughs> I was gonna say you need to go shoot a turkey, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, bro, I'm 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 gonna go get a butterball and have one the night before if that's the, you know, I'll shoot a BB gun at it or something. Try, try to get some luck going because I don't turkey hunt. I don't know how everybody does it. I don't have the money. I mean, you know, I me and my wife we do well, but dude, I you know, fishing is expensive and time and everything. I don't know how everybody. Gets any more money to have all these extracurriculars outside of fishing, huh? I, I, if Crazy. I spent any more money, my wife would shoot me. Um, <laughs> no, Tony was putting up over 85 inches for quite a while. He yeah. was confident, and then, but the weather, man, I mean, if, if the river blows out and stuff, and, and that's what happened. The river got really high, and it, it got to almost where he liked it, but not quite. And yeah. they just, they, he struggled with it. I think they got so high that they didn't they didn't come back to normal where they should be. Yeah, I ain't put I ain't put that together. West Virginia, Virginia, you know, they I, I think they touch each other, right? Somewhere. <laughs> Virginia. I live in southern West Virginia, and like where I fish at, I'm driving two and a half hours. I mean, I live next to the New River too, but I'm not as big a fan of the river. As you know, like um, I met Tony through Jody Queen and Brian Aliff. Yeah, um, they live close to me, and then Tony lives on a little farther in Virginia. But um, we've roomed together at tournaments and stuff. I know him really well. We talk weekly. So. You, you got right. a good limit. I mean, he's going to get a good limit. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's you know he's a stick. I, I've kind of creeped on him on social media, and he uh, yeah he he can catch him so. <laughs> You got yeah. to. You got to be yeah. a creep. I mean, it's you know, if if you're making it this far, and that's kind of the fun thing, you know, it's like you. I, I know Jonathan, you're fishing against the Deacons, big names, and Mark. You're a big, you know, you're a household name with your one one horn goat. But the, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's 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 fun because you know, there's a lot of people like I had to look up their names. There's people all over the bracket. Like, who's this dude? Who am I fishing against? Who's you know, my last. I, I fished against somebody who, Brad Golden. Nobody's probably ever heard of that name, but that dude is a legit hammer down here. He lives in Chattanooga, and I knew week one I was going to have to put up a big number to beat him because he's already gotten third, beat me in a tournament, and then gotten first and another one on Gunnersville. I knew he was going to hammer him. So it's like, you know, the guy who's, uh, I, I think you said, who, who got first place on, on Sunday? Oh, uh, Rolando, Rolando Nandon yeah. with a three and a half. Yeah, dude's fishing out of a pelican, yeah. like <laughs> you know, spanking everybody. So you know, it's mm -hmm. it's people coming out of the woodwork. Out, I like it's not names everybody knows, and that's awesome, and it's fun, and it brings something different. And thanks again to Greg for putting this whole deal together. And Mark, uh, Mark Coates, you 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 made a bracket that people could bet on, right? Yeah, speaking of which, I think I was the only one that actually picked you, so I appreciate that. <laughs> what? All hey, right. But, hey, I knew you were all right. <laughs> Greg, Greg had uh, uh, the golden going the whole bracket, didn't he? Well, yeah, because he, he went did. on KBN, and, uh, all, you know, his boys with Ryan, because they all fish together in TVKA, so... Ryan picked them to win the whole thing, so I knew. I listened to that, and that lit a fire under me because I'm like, he's going on KBN, and they're picking the dude to beat me first round to go the whole way. So I got, I, you know, that lit a fire under me. I had to go beat somebody. Dan was quite fired up, man, all week. Oh, yeah. People were rating him as the other underdog, and he's like, I'm going to show these guys what's up, you know, and it just fueled his fire. Yeah, I, didn't, I, I don't like to be the underdog. <laughs> It's, it's fine. It worked out. I've actually got me and Edwards going at it in the final uh, final four. Mm. I, like that. I like to see that. I like it. I hope you so. Better bring it. You better catch a five fish limit. 
Oh. <laughs> Let the smack talk begin. If they're on the beds, then you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> if they get and that's, up, and that's, kind of, that's kind of the thing in this bracket thing, too, is it's, first of all, whoever, I think it's six, you, six uh, brackets you have to win to make it. Uh, you have to win a whole deal. Dude, whoever wins six in a row, I, I think it's six, right? Yeah. It is six, yeah. That's ridiculous that you can win six different mini tournaments. So you have to be on them, except for Mark. You have to be on them every single time. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. But the, uh, <laughs> but I mean, again, that's a beauty of the of a bracket deal. So you have to be, you know, you have to catch them six times in a row, and that's 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 fun. That's exciting. But the, uh, you know, it's it's tough too. You could slip up one time, and and you're done. You can't. Mark is the only person that would could have a bad day, but besides him, you can't have one bad day in a month and a half. Not yeah. one. Yeah. That, and whoever, you deserve that title. And whoever's on him now, like uh, Jonathan, his fish are getting better, maybe it, since it's warming up, and mine are going mm-hmm. from that spawn post spawn like they're right in, they're in all three phases right now where. All of you, well, at least Edwards and Jonathan, uh, like, uh, Coach, yours might be a little pretty close to where I'm at, right? Like all three phases are right there. Oh, yeah. Like, you might find a few bedded fish, but for the most part, it's post-spawn or, like, dunda. Dunda, yeah. So, Edwards and Jonathan, I mean, y'all, you know, your fish are going to be getting better and mine are getting worse. So, I might ha- I might be able to make it to that eight on the pattern I'm on now, but after that, it, it y'all's turns on. So that's like, that's another fun thing of the bracket is the length of time. Another, you know, a whole nother deal. I might have to change lakes from going from Gunnersville to somewhere else because it's a better post spawn early summer kind of ledge deal, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, um, I got one the lake. I'm on one lake all in, but I just don't have a lot of choices. I mean, if I was, if this was the only tournament I was fishing, I would go to Smith Mountain Lake. I would go to Smith Mountain. I love Smith Mountain, but it's a two-hour drive, you know, on in Virginia. But it's it's more like what y'all were saying. It's it's still more spawn, but there's some post spawns and pre spawns. And then I got a lot of friends. Casey Reed's down there, and a shad spawns on, and he's like wanting me to come down there and fish shad spawn. And it's you can you could get a really good bag down there right now, the shad yeah. spawn. And then Jonathan, with you, you're you're lucky because I, I know in Michigan people can't float, uh, can't fish in a motorboat, right? Yeah, yeah. Right now, it's actually uh, our governor deemed it illegal to fish out of a motorboat. Um, it's been kind of it's it's a little different now. Uh, counties, especially up in the UP, are kind of uh, establishing their own kind of rules, and they are starting to allow more stuff. But like like literally right now, though, guys in boats. They're not fishing for bass. They're yeah. fishing for walleye. They're walleye. fishing for brown trout. They're, you know, trout season starts here this coming week, you know. So, uh, as far as, like, bass fishing pressure, it, like, it's it's not a priority. Non-existent. Right and, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, Must there's, nice. <laughs> there's, I mean, we had big bodies of water, Little Baby Knock. I live on Little Baby Knock, and uh, it's just what was it, maybe like two weeks ago, there was still ice, you know, on Lake Michigan a little bit now. Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, out in the big water, you know, the water temperatures, it's just not there. But, like, a lot of times when I do, like, just online tournaments, it's all about KDF-wise and things, you know, even, like, our local stuff, I don't even start it till May. Because normally, uh, obviously, this spring, things kind of you know, weather-wise kicked up sooner. Or normally, in April... There isn't enough places for people to go fish out of a kayak, you know, unless you're going out in the bay. And, you know, a lot of people just aren't well versed out in the deeper water, me being one of them, which is, you know, something I need to work on. But, uh, but yeah, it's like usually like May, May is, is the time for us up here. And it's like if everything works out and I can catch the fish, you know, that presents itself right now. I mean, I, I haven't caught a fish underneath you know, 16 inches right now, but there's a lot of those 16, 17s out there. 
And I know at different times in the past, you know, monthly I'm also catching 18s and 18s and 18s and 19s. And it's like, come on, where's that 20 inches? And, you know, yeah. it's like, but what's cool about this tournament is it with it being one day, I mean, it, you know, like all you guys said, it, depending on the water you're in, it's, you might only get one 20 inch in one day. You know, you, you know, you might just get stuck with a whole bunch of 16s and 17s. And, you know, I've been there too, but it's like sometimes yeah, you just got to get lucky. But that's what I love about fishing, right? Any given yeah. day. You can go to the same body of water I do, throw the same thing. I mean, last week I was fishing alongside, literally, he caught six fish in front of me throwing the same exact bait as me. I couldn't catch a fish. You know, I mean, yeah. we're, we're literally, I don't know, 200 feet apart. And it's just, you know, I don't know. It, it's cool. This one day thing and getting a chance to, you know, smaller guys like me just really starting to get into this stuff and grind it out, being able to fish against top guys, you know, and it's, it's cool. I like it. And it's, uh, I, I'm already signed up for the May one too. I don't, I don't know how this is going to play out, but regardless, I'm coming right back in May with whatever I can do too. So it's, it'll be cool. And yeah. and I, I think that's part of it too, where, Maybe not a strategy, but now that everybody has made it from the 64 to 32, it's like, well, I put in $25, I'll give it a shot. So the people that went out the first round, it's like, maybe they didn't take it as seriously. Or or maybe they didn't, just didn't have a bad day. That you know, Obviously, that happens too, it's fishing. But now that we're in 32, it's like, mm, things are, you know, things have cranked up a notch. So now you're kind of taking it a little bit more serious. I imagine like, what we're going to be willing to do once it makes it past this round and you're in the 16, you know, you make it past the next round to eight and you're in the money. So I think the next round, even though the competition's great now and it's turned up a notch this week, I think next week from 16 to eight, that's when it's really going to be the numbers, the average, I would think the average is going to go up. The average last week was ridiculous, but I think next week, from 16 to 8 is when it's really going to be the numbers are going to increase. Yeah, sure. <laughs> What's that? I actually, I, I actually think the numbers, uh, I actually, I wouldn't be surprised the, the fewer people we get for the averages to go down. I think the farther we get into the tournament, like uh, the 16 and 8 round, I think you're going to see more people actually pull it off with an 80-inch 80, 80 range uh, back. You think so? Yeah, because, I mean, you got to think about it. A lot of these guys, you don't want to leave a spot that you just got 90 inches out of. You want to yeah. go back to that spot the next weekend. So you hammer the same fish two, two weeks in a row, and like you said, we're already done with the spawn. So by the time that third week hits, then fish are going to move. Yeah, I mean it's and that's the thing too. If you catch them the week you you know you slay them the week before, and then you think, well, I don't really have to practice. I don't want to sore lip them for this week. I know they were at there in that area. You go to that same spot. People are dependent on that. They show up and then, you know, nothing. So yeah, I mean that hey that that's that's something else too. That's one of the God. I love strategy. I love the puzzle of going out there and trying to figure it out every day. I love that. This has a little bit of a strategy difference than uh, your regular, you know, regular tournament. Yeah. It's going to be different because some of these guys are probably going to fish the same water. And you, you're you not going to be able to fish the same water six days in a row. If, you know, if you made it all the way to championship, you're definitely going to have to change it up. I mean, yeah, um, yeah. that's what he's I, saying. And, I agree and with. just the, the dates, the just the length of the tournament, you know, spawn, post-spawn early summer, how it's going to change so much that, yeah, I mean, you, you're going to be on totally different things throughout the whole tournament. So somebody that does good in the beginning might suck it up in the end, you know. They might be a shallow water guy, and they start to push out deep, and then, you know, and then you're done. So uh, we'll This see. is why I'm thankful I'm only three hours from Lake Fork. <laughs> yeah, yes. And, like, we're, we're fishing our tournament, too, and that's, uh, you know, we have a paddle and fin deal. And it's kind of the same thing where how serious is somebody going to get? Like if in ours, they get it's double elimination. So you might lose the first time. That's not that big of a deal. Second time, that's like, 
Well, I'm not losing a damn second time, so I'm, I'll drive to wherever I have to to go catch some big fish. Y'all are going down. Yeah. 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 All yeah, right. I, I know. Peter, I fish with. He's already talking about going going down below the bridge this weekend, and it's like, well, man, I don't know. I wouldn't be going to fishing waters. I don't know about right now, but hey, yeah. you want to go for gold? <clears throat> Give you all the props in the world, man. I, I haven't been on Stonewall in a spring in uh, four or five years when I drove up there the other day. I mean, it was just a, it's got a lot of fish in it. And actually, I don't know if y'all know Tim Isaacs, but um, he put up 90 inches. He put up 89 and a half or something. And them conditions was unbelievable. I mean, you know, there, there's fish in that lake and he caught them in under, under them conditions. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the way he caught them, them fish must have been spawning, man. He was throwing up in bushes and just leaving it set, he said. Just leaving it set there. It's huh. weird. I yeah, can't that do that. Weird. That's that's taking that bush. That's weird. Yeah. I, I throw a shake I threw a shaky head and caught all my fish on the shaky head and I bounce it around and go to the next tree or something. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way I'm a little more power than I am, you know, weight kind of guy. But that, that, that's how I caught some mine at the end of the day, you know, a bridge on Gunnersville. They didn't upgrade me, but I was just having a dead stick of shaky head under a bridge and just to let it sit and wait for him to drag, you know, run off with it. But it is what it is. We'll see. Does anybody have anything else they want to add before we start to wrap this up? But I just want to say, uh, you know, good, good luck to all you guys uh, going into round two and, uh, you know, I look, I look forward to uh, to chasing you guys down. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, I'm not a quarter inch behind Perry this time, but only time will tell. <laughs> hey, man, I put those numbers up early. I didn't sandbag. I wanted everybody to be like, I wanted to put it up real quick, as fast as I could, just to get in everybody's head. Because I know, chased and... you for six hours. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 lo- I loaded them monkey just for me as I've. Uh, I don't know how it looked on Tourney X, but a 37-inch fish come across through air. <laughs> oh, no, I, <laughs> I had a measuring board. I had a repel a measuring board, and I, I took it and measured it because I'm in a multi-species tournament too, so I actually – no, Greg, Greg said on the, when he denied it, nice fish, but that don't count. <laughs> my, my, I had a heart attack. But I, but, my – I had four fish, 96 and a half inches, if you count the two muskies. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, they, they actually uh, messaged me because I had caught, like I was on fish a lot, and then I, it's kind of, I was catching them back to back, and then I kind of moved a little bit more, and I got into an area with some bigger fish, and I caught them back to back. I think I caught three in a row. And then two other ones within a half an hour, and that's all of them that I measured. They actually messaged me and said, uh... <laughs> What's you know is everything you know they just wanted to check and it was it just a hot spot was something wrong with the app because I caught them back to back to back so it's cool we talked about it and I just explained what was going on and showed them a picture and yeah it was cool though all right Jonathan do you have anybody you want anybody you want to thank how can people find you out online how can you do you have any social media sir yeah I mean. I just got my main Facebook page, um, but otherwise, I mean, you can follow our group page, the Upper Peninsula Kayak Anglers. I share a lot of my own personal stuff on there. Like I said, that's a group we got going up north here. We got some live tournaments. We got monthly long tournaments. Um, you can go on Instagram and search Hunt Fish 906. I share a lot of stuff. You know, not just my kayak bass fishing and stuff, but also you know, uh, deer deer hunting, pheasant hunting, different things. You know, that I like doing up here in the UP and stuff, messing around with my around with my dog and stuff like that but uh uh like to thank uh six kill fishing products uh strictly using their rods and reels a lot of their baits and it's a uh, great products and uh you know i've been fishing with these guys for quite a while especially you know since i've been in the kayak and uh yeah i just i thank you guys for letting me come on and talk about stuff and i wish everybody good luck and uh i got i got one thing to add to this whole tournament thing if i can make it past Mr. Eric Siddiqui, and I can make it to the four, to the last round of the final four, I will fish out of my 10-foot kayak that I bought from Menards that I first started fishing in. 160 bucks. I will fish out of that final four if I make it that far. And I will guarantee <laughs> I like that. If I make it to the final four, man, I'll get in that SOB, and I'll give it my all. 
Nice. That's awesome. Man, thanks for being on the show and up there in the UP living a dream. I'm, I'm going to have to message you and find out some more information because, I, like, I, I'm for real. That's like bucket list. Like, I've always wanted to go up there. All right, Mr. Coates, any shout outs and how can people find yeah, Look you up. So uh, you can look up uh, Mark Coates Fishing. Uh, that's my uh, my fishing page. I do a whole lot of giveaways there every week. I'm actually doing one right now. Anybody that can guess the total inches of what I bring in on Saturday gets a bait pack of whatever I use, whether I catch a fish on it or not. Um, a big shout out to uh, to Windows USA, New Canoe, uh, Last Cast Customs, uh, ZR Custom Tackle, and Whack 'Em and Stack 'Em Baits, and then of course all my family. They're my biggest supporters. You can watch the broadcast on Saturday. You're going to see 500 different posts from people with the last name Coates, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, man, I, I just live for this uh, this type of uh, of competitiveness, and at the same time, big shout out to Hayden Crosno, even though I'm coming to get you. Very cool, and and thank you, uh, Mark. Uh, Greg put up today that Windows USA is sponsoring a big bass, whoever catches the biggest bass, and they do a, what, a video of it. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, so uh, Windows USA is throwing up $200 to the, uh, the, person, that, what, to the person that gets the best uh, or biggest bass videoed release. So what you have to do, um, you have to, of course, take your picture of the measurement, send that in to Greg as well as a video of, uh, of you releasing that bass back into the water and it's swimming away. That way, during the broadcast, they've got they've actually got a feed to show, like kind of like I did Todd Patrick's big five-pounder he caught on Sunday. Just send that video and, uh, and the measurement picture through Facebook Messenger, and not only will <laughs> you win 200 bucks if you've got the biggest one, but also whether you got the biggest or the smallest, it's going to be shown on live broadcast. So, you know, exposure, if nothing else. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, thank you to Windows USA. That's, that's nice of them jump in, and we appreciate y'all. Uh, you know, and all these brands and companies that you're hearing, try to support the companies that support us and support kayak fishing. Uh, you know, like that there's a lot of companies that do and a lot of companies that don't. So it's if you can pick a product that's supporting our industry and helping us grow and helping out the anglers, please do that. So, Mr. Mark Edwards, how about you, buddy? I know fishing online's your your, your people. Yeah, fishing online, John and Bree, man, they're they're great. They, I mean, anything over fifty dollars, it's free shipping, and I can I can actually get. It. They're near Pittsburgh, and I can get it in two days on ground regular shipping. Right. So that that's great. And um, then I got I'm on native watercraft now. I'm on that's fine with native, so I'm actually yeah, dude. Here. I got me a Max Slayer. I just got to pick it up with this coronavirus. I mean, I was going to go pick it up, but yeah, like I, I I actually me and my wife we were going to go to the plant and go pick up a Slayer XC. I want a riverboat, and uh and yeah, this kind of put a damper on that. Yeah, but eventually. I'm- and I just gotta, um, cause they're actually still working. So, actually, Native is really doing good right now. They, the last time I talked to them was a couple weeks ago, and they're still selling boats good. So they're working everybody. So that that's great, considering what's going on. Hopefully, everybody, hopefully this coronavirus gets passes by soon. Yeah. And um, I, I know my local shop's still selling kayaks. I mean, they're they're doing it, you know, one person at a time, things like that. So right now. You know, more than ever, support your local companies if you can, your local kayak shops. And, uh, you know, like like I just said, with fishing online, that's another one. Anybody ever heard of Tackle Warehouse supporting a kayak angler? No? No. I, I haven't either. I'm not putting them <laughs> down. I, I love their stuff. But, hey, fishing online, Fish USA, there's some companies doing it. So, you know, I'm just saying there's differences there. And uh, thank you to my co-host, Brian, for being on the <laughs> show. Mean- I didn't say much, man. <laughs> yeah, I've been talking. I'm all jacked up about this. It's all good, man. Yeah. It's all good. I'm just sitting back, man, enjoying it, dude. It's a, it's a cool event. I know you and I had a conversation about it, man. It's different. It's bringing something uh, to the community when we're in such messed up times, right? And uh, I think it's cool, man. It's It's been entertaining to watch, and uh, I hope to see you advance and everybody else in here, man. Yeah, we'll see. I'm, root, I'm rooting for the UP, man. That's the closest to home. Yeah. Bro. I mean, <laughs> you know, Siddiqui's on the native team, too. So I, I can't be against him, but good luck to you, too, man. I I hope y'all do y'all both do well and somebody wins by quarter ounce and y'all both have a great day. 
There you what go. Happened right. the what's what's the deal with a tie? Say somebody tied. Oh, I, I there's second. A, there's a so okay. in, in the in the sudden death, if two people both skunk out, um, the tie, of course, if you catch fish, you know, would go to the biggest fish. But if you both skunk, uh, me and Greg were talking about that. He said there would be a sudden death. You would have to pick a day during the week uh, sometime between Monday and Wednesday where you could both fish. And it hasn't happened yet. So we're, we were tossing back the idea of either the first person to throw up a fish takes it or the biggest fish in that amount of time. Yeah, cool. I just I just crossed my mind and I wondered. I'm not skunking this week. <laughs> well, because you were, it was you were almost in that situation. Yeah, well, there was actually in our other bracket. They actually some guys skunked and they just flipped a coin. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. That's that's how they do it in West Virginia, man. <laughs> I, do, I do have just one more quick thing. Well, yeah, what's up, bud? Pippin, I will take on your challenge if for some reason Lady Luck is on our side and me and you meet up in the championship. I'll go against you in your 10-foot, $150 kayak and my first ever kayak I got when I was 14, my Ascend sit-in. And I will take you on in that boat. Well, I, as long as I get fourth, I hope y'all both make it to the championship and beat me. <laughs> I'd I, I take fourth just to watch that, man. Do it live. That, that'd be a hoot. That'd be a Hey, Daniel, I didn't have it. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, man, I, I hope it comes down to me and you. That'd be fun. We'll, we'll, we'll have to fish for the goat. <laughs> I, I, got a little, I got a little yard. It'd look good with a one-horn goat back there. So. <laughs> yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll, get, we'll do pink slips. I'll, your goat and my dog. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, Sunday, we're having our paddle and fin uh, bracket. We're having our own bracket deal. Uh, this week's going to be me and Sam Jones. Unfortunately, he's a hammer. I'm probably going to get beat oh, twice. Oh, stop. I'll, I'll do the best I can. Hey, I'm fishing Logan Martin. Oh, I, I, haven't, I haven't fished there since the event. But, I like I, yeah, the, the Bassmaster where I sucked it up but the wind's going to be so bad like i can't go <laughs> to lake so i'm kind of stuck but uh who, who else is fishing brian is uh, uh J- jp and noob 2.0 so sean laver and he's there on the susquehanna so yeah yeah we'll say it'd be a good day so from uh eight central seven central seven to 11 central eight to 12 eastern check us out online it'll be a live feed uh two brackets going against each other. We did it last week and we're doing it this week. Should be fun. So yeah, yeah check it out. Check us out online. Uh, hopefully you sign up like three plus thousand dollars in prizes and it's, it's a good time and, and be listening. We might have something else coming out before too long. So yep. So keep watching. So uh, yep. Wear your PFDs and, and be safe out there. All right. Yeah, buddy. Thanks y'all. Thank you. Go check out the website, guys, paddle, the letter N and fin.com. Also check out YouTube, youtube.com forward slash paddle and fin. If you got a question, comment, or want to hear from a future guest, feel free to email us at paddle, the letter N and fin at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We're doing giveaways, announcements, things like that at Facebook and Instagram at Paddle and Finn. Shout out to our show supporters, Rocktown Adventures, Loveland Canoe and Kayak, Hammered Lures, Fish Mob Lures, TRC Covers, Catch Products. Go to catchproducts.com. You can put the Paddle and Finn logo right on your catch board. Don't forget to go over and pick up your Jig Masters jigs. Use promo code PNF20 and save 20% today. Don't forget to rate and review the podcast on whatever platform you're listening to. It helps grow the audience, helps others find our podcast. So please drop a five-star rating in on the podcast platform you're listening on. Don't forget about the Recycled Plastics program, you guys. Take your used plastic baits, put them in an envelope, mail them to the address in the show notes. Our man Eric Richards at Hammered Lures melts those down, makes new baits, and donates them to various chapters of Heroes on the Water.